Okay, this is pretty cool. This is a spider, a spider embryo eight days after its egg was laid. And you can sort of see it's an incipient spider at this point. So it's no, no longer just a featureless ball. You can actually see, oh, you can see it's hints of the pedipalps. You can see the legs forming along the side. They're all tightly curled around the abdomen. But still, look at that. That's, that's pretty. I think I'm going to try and get a closer look at that. This is at 40x right now, but we can zoom in even more. Alright, so I've taken that spider I just showed you and I've moved it over to my big Leica scope. So we're looking at a much higher power view right now. Uh, and I, I have to confess I'm a little disappointed. So what we're seeing here is we're looking face on on the baby spider. And that's the top of his head at the top. And I will focus through. Let's see. If, oh, wrong way. Focus through, and you can see structure there. So I'm not sure exactly what that is. It's like there's thick, ropey, tentacle-like things all over the place. So like I said, this is the face. So those are probably the pedipalps that you're seeing come into view there. And then we're looking dead center on its face with the two pedipalps on either side, I think. I don't know my spider anatomy well enough. And these structures just kind of run out onto the abdomen, which is that dark area down below, and spread out. So I said I was a little disappointed because if this were a zebrafish, see fish have the advantage that they kind of lie flat. So a two-dimensional view is pretty informative. And I would be able to focus on single cells and look at those in operation and all kinds of cool stuff like that. Um, this spider is much rounder and thicker and three-dimensional. And it makes it really hard to get good optics. So you see, look at this right now. We're focusing through, we got the light focusing up through the whole breadth of the animal to reach us. So it's kind of blurry when it gets to us. And I can't resolve, at least not very well, individual cells. I see hints of them as I look at that. But, yeah. Maybe I'll drop it down to a lower power, and we'll see if we can resolve anything. It's also really dark, because I'm pumping all this light through it, but it's, it's such an opaque animal. Okay, let me fix those a little bit. So this is at 10x. We've lost all the advantages of DIC, so we wouldn't be able to see cells anyway. But now you can sort of see the shape of the spider wrapped around its own abdomen. And it's so thick, so dark. It doesn't really work well with transmitted light. I'm clearly going to have to tinker with optics some more in the future. But he's still kind of cute looking. Okay, I was asked if I could get some pictures of the spiders attacking flies. I don't think I'll quite get that here, but I just fed these guys, and you can see how effective these cobwebs are. So there are the poor, struggling fruit flies. And there are plenty of spiders all hanging around here. A fruit fly pupa fell in with the, the adult flies, and they seem to be a little bit excited about that. I don't know if they can eat a fruit fly pupa, but they will. They'll try. Look at those happy little guys scurrying around. That one's thinking about escaping, I can tell.
But as I mentioned before, it's this, it's, it's an amazing three-dimensional web. Oh yeah, that's a freshly closed fruit fly. Its wings haven't yet inflated, so oh, you gotta feel a little sympathy for it. But there's a spider underneath it. So yes, these spiders are eating well today. If you were a fly, this might be the stuff of nightmares, but okay. Look at them all. They're so excited when I dropped all those flies in there. <laughs> 